there, it's Farmer Brad and spring is just around the corner. So now is the time to incubate eggs or uh, start thinking about buying some chicks from the farm store. No matter what type of incubator you go with, uh, they have some common features. So here I have the GQF 1502 Sportsman Incubator. This is a cabinet style incubator. This one can crank out about 90 chicks a week. It has three levels and it auto rotates the eggs so you don't have to manually do that. Over here is a little rinsey, it's the Mini 2 Advance Incubator and this auto rotates. This is the incubator that I use in my hatching program or um, rent a hatch uh, to where schools or homes can uh, get hatching eggs from me and then sort of watch the process of incubating eggs. This, this one uh, works really great. It's a little pricey, but it will do a great job incubating the eggs. Now my first one that I picked up from Amazon, this is the Magic Fly Auto Egg Incubator. This does auto rotate the eggs. So it has a thing that will slide. I actually lost one of the dividers, so I ended up 3D printing my own. So if you have this style of incubator, I'll put a link in the description of where you can uh, download a 3D uh, file and then go to some place like Staples I think they have some 3D printers that you can have things printed off. Okay so the incubation process everyone might uh, do it a little different but I'll tell you how I do things here. So first you gather the eggs and and for the longest time I, I didn't uh, I, I didn't realize that uh, in nature when a mother hen sits on the eggs that starts the process but uh, pretty much from the time you gather your first egg you have up to like a 11 to 12 day window I typically try to stay within the 8 to 10 day window of gathering the eggs before putting them in the incubator and that is just so that you have a better chance of fertility as you go on further then that fertility rate will drop uh, as a egg becomes less viable uh, to produce a baby chick. And at a minimum, I try to do one rooster to four hens. Ideally, I'll do two roosters to six hens, at least with my ostrilorps. And then uh, this one here has three levels. And so on the side, I have a hatching chart that I document the hatching. That chart identifies the tray, so on these egg trays I have an A or a B on them. And then, um, and then I say what level, so tray 1, 2, or 3, and then tray A or B. Uh, then the quantity of eggs that I've gathered and I update that number as the eggs are gathered and then the date that I start the tray then I count up eight days until the date when I need to and put them in the incubator and then I count out 18 days before lockdown and then I put how many days uh, the eggs need to be in the incubator. That way if I end up um, doing uh, various different type of eggs, then I'll have that record. And then the estimated end date, and that's when they've been in the incubator for around 21 days. And then I keep track of how many hatched from that, from that batch. And so with this incubator, I can start a row one week, then the next week I start another row, then the next week I start another row, and by the time I start this row, this top one is about ready to start hatching. Down in the bottom there is a 
hatching tray. Right there. And that is where the eggs go. When it's like day day 19 or day uh, 20 and uh, then then they'll start cracking and, and hatching out. Now at day 18 you want to put the incubator on lockdown and that is where you bump up the humidity. So typically the humidity is between 45 and 55 percent uh, during most of the incubation period. Then at day 18 you bump it up to 60 to 70 percent and the way I do that with this incubator is there is a water reservoir up in the top. There's a water reservoir up in the top and then I have this uh, sort of sponge type thing and it increases the surface area of the water and that ends up bumping up the humidity. So I just place that in there. Now originally with this incubator I'd have to keep on adding water uh, because it just had this uh, little reservoir. I fill up this bucket up here and then it comes in and then there's a float valve in the reservoir so that water is always topped off. And then on the side, I can check and it's set to 100 degrees and then the humidity is 36 right now because I just had to open that up. Um, and so now it's building back up. But with whatever incubator you go with, what's important is your humidity levels. This incubator, you just end up pouring more water on the bottom level and that, and then there is a sensor in here that tells you the humidity and the temperature. And for chicken eggs, you want it right around 100 degrees. Now this incubator, the water reservoir, is in the middle. So you end up pouring water in there, and then you keep on adding water to it from the outside. Now this one just rotates the eggs and as, let me show you, and then as this rotates around it is spinning the egg there, which is pretty nifty design. And they kept it very simple. So this incubator with uh, this one that it comes with, it can hold seven uh, regular sized chicken eggs. Now this disc you put in there and that is for quail eggs. Uh, so you're able to fit a lot more quail eggs with this because they're much, much smaller. Then another style of incubator is a foam uh, still air incubator. And that one you have to manually turn the eggs. They do make some auto egg rotators that you can put in there. Um, I'll put a link on Amazon to that style of incubator and so I started with this one this one's pretty affordable on Amazon and then I went to this one and then I finally went to this one baby chicks hatch out of the bottom and then I put them I have this uh, rubber container that put wood, wood uh, shavings in the bottom and that ends up absorbing any of spilt water and their chicken poop and then I also put a heat lamp. Now I typically try not to go full blown with the 250 watt bulbs. I try to be in the 125 to 150 watt bulbs and then uh, you want to also in your brooder setup to um, put the heat on one side so that then the chicks can self-regulate. But yeah, so one benefit of hatching eggs on your farm is that I'm providing, I'm sort of replicating my own flock. I have a barnyard flock and then I have my Australorp flock and then I have my Bantam Cochin flock. 
And so you're able to sort of recreate that mix uh, for future generations, which is great. The other benefit is you can buy hatching eggs online. I uh, sell my Australorp hatching eggs uh, on my website for $15 a dozen. I haven't tried to ship them out yet. Um, I, I may be uh, working towards that. Being able to incubate eggs gives you a lot more options and variety to gather various species of chickens and birds on your farm. You go to eBay and then you can find various breeds that would be a little bit more difficult to get chicks on your farm. Now the prices may vary and the hatchability rate may vary so definitely do your research and find good breeders so that you have the best chance for success. So another benefit of having an incubator on your farm is that you end up being more self-resilient. So last year with COVID, everyone was getting chickens and the hatcheries were swamped with orders and sometimes there was delays and sometimes uh, you just could not get any chickens. So by having an incubator and being able to source either your own hatching eggs or hatching eggs from other places such as eBay, you can be more self-reliant as a homestead, being able to hatch out that next generation of flock for your farm and to be able to provide more eggs with your farm and for your family. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Uh, also hit the like button if you like this video, hit the down button if you didn't like this video, and leave a comment uh, with uh, what type of incubator you have or what questions you have about incubating baby chicks uh, on your farm. And until next time, have a great day.